a question I've kind of been dying to ask because you never can know by just looking at somebody. But do we have any metalheads out there? Okay, if you do not know what a metalhead is, people that are into heavy metal. And come on, I, in fact, I know that I, Bill, and I, Bill and I were talking, he has met some hair bands from the 80s, we, we know this. Metallica fans. Okay, all right, see, yeah, yeah, it'll come out, it'll come out. So I'm going to give you, if, if you do not, if you are not a metalhead, I'm going to give you a little bit of rock history. Back in 1983, Metallica got its first record deal. And you know, any musicians of any stripe, you can wait your entire life to get signed by a label. And so this band from L.A. was, was on its way to selling over 180 million albums worldwide. They were huge, and they're still, they still tour to this day. And they had this great guitarist, Dave Mustaine. And right before they started recording this first album, which was going to launch them nationally, they were in New York, and one morning, they kicked him out of the band. It was cold. There hadn't been some big fight. They hadn't had a blow-up or anything like that. There wasn't a difference of musical opinion. They literally woke up, handed him a bus ticket, and told him to go back to L.A. He was kicked to the curb. So Dave, he had to get on that bus and on that long bus ride from New York to Los Angeles. He had to sit there and wonder what he had done wrong. What he was going to do now. And had he just missed his once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Jacob had already cheated his older brother out of his inheritance. And then with his mother's help, he tricked his father into passing God's blessing onto him. This too was cold. After Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and just as Jacob left his father Isaac, his brother Esau came back from his hunt. He too made some delicious food, brought it to his father and said, let my father sit up and eat from his son's game so that you may bless me. His father Isaac said to him, Who are you? And he said, I'm your son, your oldest son, Esau. Isaac was so shocked that he trembled violently. He said, Who was the hunter just here with game? He brought the food. He brought me food. And I ate it all before you came. I blessed him, and he will stay blessed. When Esau heard what his father said, he set out a loud, agonizing cry and wept bitterly. He said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. Isaac said, Your brother has already come deceitfully and has taken your blessing. Esau said, Isn't this why he's called Jacob? He's taken me twice now. He took my birthright and now he's taken my blessing. He continued, haven't you saved a blessing for me? Isaac replied to Esau, I've already made him more powerful than you, and I've made all of his brothers his servants. I've made him strong with grain and wine. What can I do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, do you really only have one blessing, father? Bless me too, my father. And Esau wept loudly. Esau did miss a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to receive God's blessing from his father. He got cheated by his brother not once, but twice. If there is any universal constant... It is that bad stuff happens. It just does. 
Maybe sometimes it's got some kind of reason, like you did a bunch of horrible things and people really are out to get you. Or maybe it just comes out of nowhere, like a diagnosis of cancer or a stroke. The truth is, is that you can count on bad stuff happening. It's a part of being human. You can say that it's all part of some cosmic plan or not, but it's still going to happen. The question is, is how are you going to respond? And can you find happiness in hard times? That depends a lot on the metric that we use to evaluate things, and that's what we talked about last week. And also, it's about the values which guide your decisions about what really matters to you. Now, in Dave Mustaine's story, on that long bus ride back to L.A., he made a decision. He was going to start a new band. And Metallica, they would rue the day when they kicked him to the curb. And so he worked like a dog, went out and recruited the best musicians he could find. And he was fueled out of this sense, a sense of anger and resentment for what had happened. And his new ba- band, Megadeth, they got their first record deal, and it went gold. Megadeth has sold over 25 million albums. Not bad. Dave Mustaine is considered to be one of the most brilliant and influential musicians of the heavy metal world. But he's not happy. 30 years after getting kicked out of Metallica, despite everything he's done professionally, in his mind, he is still the guy who got kicked out of Metallica. In Esau's story, he and his brother separated. Jacob ran for his life. Let's let's not call it Jacob ran to save himself. Esau, in the years that they were apart, Esau's household went on to be prosperous. They had success. His flocks grew. His household grew. And the day came where Jacob returned. And Esau had Every excuse for revenge. And he had opportunity for payback. Jacob knew that. And after a life-changing experience the night before, this happened. Jacob, Jacob looked up and saw Esau approaching with 400 men. Jacob divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two women servants. He put the servants and their children first, Leah and her children after them, and Rachel and Joseph last. He himself went in front of them and bowed to the ground seven times as he was approaching his brother. But Esau ran to meet him, threw his arms around his neck, kissed him, and they wept. Esau looked up and saw the women and children and said, Who are these with you? Jacob said, The children that God generously gave your servant. The women servants and their children came forward and bowed down. Then Leah and her servants also came forward and bowed. And afterward, Joseph and Rachel came forward and bowed. Esau said, what's the meaning of this entire group of animals that I meet? Jacob said, to ask for my master's kindness. Esau said, I already have plenty, my brother. Keep what's yours. We don't get to choose the stuff that's going to happen to us. We do get to choose what values will guide our life and how we respond. 
And it's those values that they determine the measure of happiness in this life. No matter what stuff happens to you, those values that you hang on to, they matter so much. Now, Jacob and Metallica, they did some pretty cold things. And they went on to have success, no doubt about it. While Bruce Mustaine and Esau got kicked to the curb in a cold way, but it could have been worse, they went on to have success in their own, of their own. The difference in the lives of Esau and Dave Mustaine was in the values. What fuels you to continue with life's struggles? Dave Mustaine achieved fortune and glory. So few musicians ever get to see an album go gold. But he felt like a failure because he had this messed up metrics of what success in his life had to look like. It was some arbitrary comparison, a need to show up Metallica that he never reached. He was never quite as popular as they were. His values were shaped by a destructive vision for revenge and a need for popularity, for celebrity that was always beyond his control. You can't control what people think of you. Somewhere along the way, though, Esau let go of his desire for revenge against the brother who cheated him twice. And he decided to focus on what he could do. He chose values that were in his control to take the world as it is, and not how he would have it be. And that's key. Choose healthy values that are based in your reality, things that you have influence over. Choose values that you can achieve internally, things that you have a measure of control over. You may not be able to control all the stuff that's going to happen to you because it will happen. You can't control what people are going to say or think about you. But you can choose honesty. You can choose to have the self-respect to stand up for yourself and to stand up for your neighbor. Good good values, good healthy values are found inside and they're not dependent on external events. Because the truth is this, that some of life's greatest moments are not pleasant. They're not material, materially successful. They may not have even felt that positive. But when you have values that are rooted in love and forgiveness, an amazing thing happens. Happiness emerges almost anywhere. In this whole story of Jacob and Esau, both men change. They adopt new values. They grow spiritually. And it shapes them into better people. Stuff still happens to them. But they face it differently as they spiritually mature. Jacob, on the night before he went across the Jabbok River to meet his brother... I love how he sends the women and animals first just to see what will happen. He's still a bit of a coward there. (laughs) But that night before, he confronts an angel, a person who embodies God, and he wrestles with God throughout the entire night. 
And he receives a wound in his hip, and it's a wound that is going to stick with him. He's going to always feel it. But he also receives a new name. It's a blessing of a new name. It's a name that went on to name a nation. Israel. It literally means one who struggles with God. Faith, religion, they don't give you some kind of magic sense of happiness. They don't, it doesn't work that way. But through faith and religion, God can give you tools can give you values for facing life's struggles, whatever they may be. And in the long run, equipped with those good values, with a sense of what's important on the inside, it's the struggles in life that we find the most meaningful and joyous things that we'll ever do. You will find that raising a child is much more fulfilling than finishing a video game. You will find that running a marathon, doesn't even matter what time you get, the fact that you finish the thing is more memorable than any dessert you will ever eat. The greatest stories of your life are going to be the ones where you struggled through the pain, the hurt, even the despair and the anger, to find a measure of true hope and happiness. So look inside. What are the values that you hold? Are they honest? Are they based in love? Love of God, love of self, and love of others. If so, then you are on a good path on your life's journey. And if not, if you are way too concerned about what other people think of you, or the holding on to anger about something that has gone on in the past. Or maybe you're just upset with life's inherent unfairness. Let it go. Will you pray with me? Holy Spirit, wash any of these bad values from me. Fill me with the same values that were in Christ Jesus and in those whose lives of your thankful, happy people so that no matter what I or what we face or what people think of us, help us to grow in your way. Amen. In that hope, let's stand together.